David's vice president of Shepherd Insurance, the Shepherd Insurance Agency. Um, the Bonnie agency, they have over 200 construction clients. And Dave's also a former banker, so I think he's uniquely positioned to talk about the economy's impact on construction firms, their ability to obtain insurance credit, and also Bonnie related. Thank you. So. Good morning. Did we figure this was working or doesn't work? Doesn't work. Okay, good. It's <laughs> all right, no problem. When, uh, when Brian asked me to, to uh, come today and talk about, uh, give an update on the surety industry, I said, I suppose, said sure, I'd be happy to, and uh, look forward to it. And then I started to, after I committed to it, start thinking about, uh, okay, well, what is the update on the surety industry in the last year? And uh, put some thought into it and, and figured out that there hasn't uh, been a whole lot of change over the last year. Uh, and I think that that's a good thing. Uh, and a bad thing, uh, depending on your perspective. Uh, but, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. There's a lot of information that I put in the presentation and uh, some, not all that I can cover in, in the time we have allotted today, but I wanted to put it in there because I think that it's important uh, and certainly be happy to answer any questions as we go through uh, and talk in, in more depth. But I'm not going to cover all the points I'm going to try and get there uh, within the time allowed. And I know that uh, not everybody is here to hear about surety. Greg Carnglow couldn't care less about surety. He's here to hear about safety. So you know, we have a little bit of a mixed audience. But I'll, I'll try and get through this, uh, give you guys a little bit of a feel for it, and, uh, and, and please jump into any questions uh, if need be. One of the interesting phrases that uh, had been going around the surety industry in 2009-2010 is, is still, I think, very appropriate uh, with respect to contractors. Uh, revenues and earnings, uh, and that that's, that phrase, the one that I like is, if flat is the new up. And, uh, and I think that that, that has pertained, pertained to 2009 and pertained to the 2010 results that are coming out, that um, given the, the factors that we're facing today, uh, that uh, most surety underwriters are going to be pretty happy uh, where for, for their clients who end up being at break even or better. Um, in and around break even and that their balance sheets are not moving backwards because given all of the challenges that uh, this economic environment is presenting, if you can get to that point, you're certainly doing well and, and if you're in fortunate uh, areas and in industries to, uh, to be making money, that, that, uh, that certainly is even better. So. Uh, so really what we're here today to talk about is how the economy is impacting the surety industry uh, and more to the point, how is that? impacting you. So I guess the question is why does it matter uh, how it's impacting the surety industry? And, and, and the answer as a contractor is that, uh, to that question, is that depending on the, how the surety industry is doing and how the results are, that certainly has an impact on how they underwrite uh, the, the credit that they're willing to give you. And <clears throat> surety and insurance obviously very different products and, and, and it starts really from the pricing perspective in that uh, uh, insurance, when there's a difficult year for an insurance company, uh, there's much more volatility in pricing. So they can make up the losses that they incur uh, by increasing pricing, and, and you guys have seen that cycle uh, in and out. It's a little bit different in the surety industry where, uh, for various reasons, competition, there's a lot less uh, volatility in the pricing. And so the question is, is that when there's poor results in the surety industry, uh, how do they how do they control that uh, and, and how do they change that? And the answer is not like insurance where we're going to double our premiums and you're going to pay more. Uh, what the way they do that is is by underwriting and uh, and the credit uh, and the exposure that they take relative to the premium that they're that they're going to take in. And so that's a, that's a key factor. So when when the surety companies are doing well. Um, there, there tends to be a little bit uh, of an ease on the underwriting and the credit side when uh, they're doing better, when they anticipate problems, there, there, there tends to be a little bit of a tightening or enforcing of the, uh, of the credit and the underwriting standpoint. So one of the things on the table that, uh, that I, I have there for you is that the uh, uh, 2010 through the third quarter the, uh, from the Surety Association, these are the results for the surety company. For the top 100, I didn't give you all of them because I didn't want to bore you with them, but there's a couple of items of note in there that I think is interesting to take a look at. So if you, if you pull that out, the first one is uh, 
while there are clearly over 100 surety companies out there, um, they're, they're really, most of the business is focused within a, a very few number of players. Uh, and if, if you look at if you look at uh, here, they're, they're listed in terms of order of premium, the largest in travelers and working their way down. Uh, their, their direct written premium, earned premium, losses, and then their loss ratio. And the first thing to take a look at is uh, if, if, you, if you look at the top five, and this number's not on there, but I'll give it to you if you just calculate. The top five players in the industry represent 55% of the, of the written premium in the entire industry. You drop that down to the top 10, you're looking at uh, 68%. The top 15 is 77%, and then the top 20 players in the industry control 82% of the volume. Those are the 2009 numbers. So what you see is you've got, you've got a very limited number of players that are making the decision for the vast majority of, of contractors uh, in the country and in insurity in general. Uh, so an interesting one. <clears throat> the other interesting piece that I always like to point out is that 2009 there was about five billion of premium written insurance. Sounds like a big number. It's not relatively speaking compared to the insurance side. It typically surety represents about one percent of the total revenues in the insurance industry. So it's a very small component of it overall. And then and really the the, the interesting uh, piece about this information is. If you look at the direct loss ratio, and that's really uh, a measure of, of the losses that the sureties are, are incurring. And typical rule of thumb, this is different obviously for each company, but if you look at uh, of, of the of 100% of a premium dollar that's written, uh, about 60 to 65% of that is operating costs. Uh, and so if you have a loss ratio in the 20 to 25% range, depending on how you mix those numbers, that still gives the, the company a profit of somewhere between 10 and 20 percent, which is pretty good. And, and, I, and, I, and I lay that out for you relative to the last column, which is the direct loss ratio, so that you can see that you know if there's only one in the top 10 companies that has a loss ratio so far for the year above 20 percent. And so that's pretty good. Uh, and some of them are below. If you look at the differences between 2009 and the first three quarters of 2010, uh, what you see is that about five of the top ten surety companies, their loss ratios are up, about five of them are down. So it's pretty much of a mixed bag. But the bottom, the, the takeaway from this is that the, that the insurance companies are still doing well. Uh, and so that's a, that's a pretty good sign, and, and hopefully they will continue to do well. Hey Dave, I, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Do you personally see a correlation between underwriting standards and the loss ratios on, let's say, the top, the top five or six companies? Like, for example, do you find when you're dealing with Hartford that they have different underwriting standards, which leads to a 22.6% loss ratio compared to, let's say, a, a Chubb, which is 2.9? Yeah, there, 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 there definitely are differences. I mean, there, there are more subtle differences, but absolutely. I mean, that, that sort, their results, and it's typically a lag. Their, their results, you'll typically see their underwriting standards tighten up when you see losses, uh, because again, theoretically, because they can't just say, "All right, we're going to double the premiums in order to make up for that," as you would see in insurance. They say, "Well, the way we control that is by." being more conservative in terms of what we're writing and, and bringing the risk down. So, so they don't control the top line insurity as much as they control the loss component of it. Their, their, their costs, again, they can move with their costs to a certain extent, but the real variable when you look at it over history is what their loss ratio is. So when you see that pop up, there certainly is a correlation. And, and, and again, I'm speaking in general terms, but there certainly is a correlation in terms of how the underwriting flows down and the message comes so while, while the economy hasn't had a significant negative impact on the surety company's results, uh, they certainly are, they certainly see the writing on the wall and have been. And, and surety companies very smartly, uh, and, they've, and they've, been, they've been looking for losses to start occurring uh, uh, over the last several years. For, for the last 24 plus months, what they've been doing is socking away reserves, which is a great thing uh, in terms of being able to smooth out their earnings and, uh, 
Uh, and so the longer that the delay in terms of the losses starts to happen, uh, the more they can put away in reserves and, and the better off they'll be from a financial standpoint. And again, you'll see 2000, the expectations of where we were a year ago uh, have started to come true, not necessarily to the extent that I expected them to, but you do see, and I believe that we will see, you know, across the board, higher losses in the surety industry for 2010. But the key thing is looking forward for 2011, uh, you know, and, and there still is the expectation in the surety industry that there are going to continue to be losses. And, 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 and the reasons why are, are more obvious to you than they are to anybody, but uh, I've listed them up here. Um, acceleration in 2011 due to the backlog, declining backlogs, increased competition for less work, thinner margins, higher overhead, more onerous contract terms. I mean, you guys know it better than I do, and I'm sure that you could add a couple to that list. Uh, talk a little bit about surety companies pumping up their reserves. One of the other interesting indicators, I think, of uh, potential problems in the in the construction market, um, more so with sub trades, is when you look at uh, people are familiar with subguard product, uh, which is a Zurich product, where large GCs basically self-insure. Uh, have a large deductible, typically half a million dollars or more. Uh, there is there is less enrollment for subguard uh, in, in this economy because the GCs who are closest to the sub base they understand certainly far before the surety industry does when there's issues with their contractors. And so while they've got dollars at risk, they look at the product and say, hey, this is not a risk we want to take. There are there are some some large GC, CMs who have shifted to use surety bonds more to, uh, to defray that risk for them. So just continued signs uh, of where, where people are expecting the losses to go. So the real question is, you know, what does all this mean? How does this, how does this uh, anticipation by the surety industry, how the results all impact you as a contractor? And this is a good time of year to be talking about it. Uh, I assume that on the financial side here, most people are in the process of wrapping up their financial statements or, or getting there, uh, in, if not already in the next you know, 30, 60 days. And so you'll quickly be uh, setting up meetings, hopefully, with surety companies and starting to talk a little bit about it. And that's part of what I want to get into today is, is talk to you a little bit about what kind of questions you're going to be hearing, what they're going to be thinking about, and why. Uh, quickly. Uh, I'll quickly kind of go on. Let's, let's, let's go to the next slide. Uh, for those of you that you don't know about, sureties aggregate bond support for a contractor based on your balance sheet. And, uh, and the way that they, they do that is they get into doing a balance sheet analysis. And the real simple version of that is that they take your, you know, they're looking at liquidity. They want to look at your working capital. What they do is they take your stated balance sheet, they make adjustments to that, and they come up with an analyzed balance sheet. They come up with an analyzed working capital and net worth figure. Uh, and, and that's ultimately uh, a simple version of the analysis that they do to determine what kind of aggregate program that you're looking at. Uh, so, uh, go on to the next slide there. But some of the things include working capital, current assets minus current liabilities on its most simple level. Uh, and, and these are some of the, of the uh, pieces of the asset side that the surety goes in and looks at. Um, certainly, uh, what they're trying to do is determine what the composition of your assets look like, what the quality of your assets are, and, and what, the, what the resulting liquidity of those are. So obviously, cash still can, the saying is, 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 is never true now, never more true now than it is. Uh, and, and so the, the, the better you can manage your cash for statement dates, certainly the better it's going to look to your surety company. Uh, they're going to look at your accounts receivable, which they always have, but they're now looking more closely. Uh, they're not only, you know, rate retained receivables used to get a free pass. The retained edge, okay, you'll collect it. We know it takes a year or whatever to collect it. They're no longer giving you a free pass on that. They're looking at everything in much more detail. 